G'day! If you want healthy hives like this in the middle of winter, which is what it is here in southern New Zealand, there are eight things that you have to do and get right, and it starts way back in the summertime. The first thing that you have to do is make sure that you locate your hives in a good spot. It needs to be in a place which is sheltered from the wind, which gets the sunshine as much as possible during the daytime, and isn't too damp. The reason that sunshine is important is that your hives need some points during the winter time when if it's a nice day, they warm up so that the bees can get out and have cleansing flights, and also so that they can break cluster and move out and gather up food, which is which they can't access when they're in a tight cluster. Number two is very location specific and it depends entirely on what the climate is like in your location. The hives have to be insulated. They have to have enough insulation for your climate. So if you're in a place where there's snow lying on the ground for weeks and months on end, you'll need a lot more insulation than if you live in a place like I do where there is uh, a mild winter with some short snaps where it's very cold. So I don't put insulation around the outside of my hives, but I do close the entrances down. I do look for any obvious gaps in hives and close them up. How can you tell if the amount of insulation you've got in your hives is enough? Generally, the answer is how much food are they going through? If they're not insulated enough, they'll chew through their food supplies very quickly and then potentially starve out in the springtime. Number three, the population of the hive going into the winter time is critical. If you start off with a very small weak hive, the likelihood of it getting through winter is very low. So you want to manage your hives to ensure they have a good strong population in the autumn. Number four, food supplies. You want your bees to have enough food in the hive to get them through. Now how much is enough? And that's a really debatable question. I winter nukes, single box hives, double deeps, a deep in the three quarters. The amount of food that a colony needs is proportionate to the number of bees in the colony and the climate that you're in. So you have to learn for yourself what is a sustainable amount for a particular hive. I don't treat them all the same, I treat them individually. At honey harvest time, I keep some food tucked to one side, not extracted from the frames, so that if I have hives that are clearly short of food, as I'm doing some spot checks in the winter time, I can drop some extra food into them. Of course, you can always put sugar candy on top, but I don't feed liquid feed in the winter time, because that introduces too much moisture and humidity into the hive. Number five is ventilation. It's really important that the hives have the right amount of ventilation. Now, I'm not saying that there's an exact correct amount for every hive. What I'm saying is you have to judge it basing on the amount of dampness in the hive. Some dampness is good, bees need some water to drink, but if you've got condensation dripping off the roof into the brood chamber, that can kill a hive. If you've got mold growing around the outside, you don't have enough ventilation. There are lots of ways to ventilate a hive, but it doesn't matter how you do it, you have to make sure that the bees have ventilation, particularly in the winter time. And as I've just touched on, number six is doing winter checks. Don't be afraid on a still day, even if it's cold, to pop the lids on your hives and have a look inside. What you're primarily looking for are two things. One, how much dampness and moisture is in there? Do they need more ventilation or not? And two, what do their food supplies look like? Do you need to supplementary feed them? It's better to find that out in the middle of winter and take steps to do something about it than it is to wait until spring, open up your hive and discover it's starved out. Number seven is the amount of space that's in the hive. So I've already touched on this a little bit. It's really important that the size of the hive 
matches the population of bees because the bees can only heat so much volume of space around them and the more space they've got the more energy and the more food it takes to heat that hive and to keep it going. Don't be scared to condense hives down, even in the middle of winter time. If I have to, if I find a hive that's shrunk right down to two frames of bees and is looking weak, I will quite happily transfer that into a nuke box with frames of honey around the outside of it and sugar candy on top. And that will increase the odds of that colony surviving the winter significantly. And then last, but absolutely not least, in fact it's the most important, is mite control. I said at the start of this video that the process of getting your bees through the winter actually starts in the middle of summer. If you want your bees to have low mite counts going into the winter and to not have suffered from a significant amount of damage from the mites and the viruses that they bring, then a mid-summer treatment for mites is really really important followed of course by a good autumn treatment so those are the eight key points that i would say determine whether your hive is likely to survive the winter of course getting your hives to survive the winter is really important but actually more hives die in the spring than at any other time of the year but that's a subject for another video i'd really appreciate it if you give this video a like if it's been helpful if you haven't yet subscribe and thanks for watching.